Boy, the way Glenn Miller played. Songs that made the hip parade. Guys like me, we had it made. Those, Those were, were the, the days. days. Didn't need no welfare state. Everybody pulled his weight. Ye are all a sour and great. Those were the days. And you knew where you were. <laughs> Mr. We could use a man like Herbert Hoover again. People seem to be content. Fifty dollars paid the rent. Freaks were in a circus tent. Those were the days. Gotta watch the Dodgers win. Remembering Gene Stapleton. Jerry Pippen and I remember Jane, Jean Stapleton, who passed today. She was remembered for the TV series All in the Family, and we started with the theme song from All in the Family. And then after uh, this little introduction, we'll go to a sort of a, man, a montage of All in the Family. And then we'll uh, discuss with Jerry Pippen... All in the family, what it meant today, uh, what the state of the American fabric is as far as sexism, racism, etc., and the state of comedy. From the Hollywood uh, Reporter, we uh, get Norman Lear, said no one uh, gave more uh, profound how to be a human being lesson than Gene Stapleton. While a co-star, Rob Lear, he was the one that uh, was portrayed as Meathead, called her brilliant comedic uh, with uh, exclusive timing. And uh, Dick Van Dyke called her such a sweet lady, tweeted a video of himself singing All in the Family theme. Beth Middleton tweeted the actress was unforgettable in the role and Seth McLean called uh, Stapleton one of the greatest actresses of all times. So various tributes are coming through to Gene Stapleton. Gene Stapleton, no doubt, was a staple of many things. And thus many uh, tributes are made uh, to her. And... We'll briefly go over the uh, New York Times obituary here. It just says Gene Stapleton, character actress who portrayed a slow, witty, big-hearted, submissive, up-to-the-point housewife on the groundbreaking series All in the Family, uh, made her along with Mary Tyler Moore and Beth Arthur, who is Maud, not only one of the foremost women in TV comedy in the 70s, but a symbol of emergent feminism in American popular culture. She died actually on Friday, let me correct myself there. Norman Lear saw her in Damn Yankee on Broadway. She was a theatrical person. And the show was originally called uh, Those Were the Days. It was an adaptation from a British series, which many were, same thing with uh, Sanford and Son, Till death, uh, us do part. Uh, it was centered in East London, and a working class area had a reactionary racist there. The show changed uh, networks to uh, CBS from ABC, something we did not know. And the first broadcast uh, in 1971. A very long time ago, it was set in Queens. Uh, Carol O'Connor was in there. He was Archie. Gloria was Sally Smevers. And Rick Stevick was, of course, Rob Reiner. Uh, a um, cast of characters, and you will hear from them. 
and Sammy Davis Jr. came uh, to visit. She was born uh, Jean uh, Murray on uh, the 19th of January, 1939, in Manhattan. Her father worked for Billboard magazine as a sales type. Her mother, Marie Stapleton, uh, was a concert and uh, opera singer. Music was very much in the family, no doubt about that. And she did quite a bit of singing. And uh, she was uh, in the original cast of Bells Are Ringing on Broadway in the 50s. Funny Girl with Barbara Streisand in uh, the 60s. And If a Girl Isn't Pretty, Find Yourself a Man. And what Broadway plays in 1971. She played Julia Child uh, in a mini musical, Bonity. And she sung with the Muppets. So she was a well-rounded uh, person in a well-rounded uh, uh, performer. She was also in other shows, Dr. Kildare, uh, My Three Sons, Car 54, Where Are You, and a, a courtroom drama, The Defenders. So she was around, and in fact, she was going to be cast in the murder she wrote. She decided not to do that one. And she was one of 45 International Women Years Commissioners who convened the National Women's Conference in Houston. That was a member one of federally funded government in, in 2000. On the third day, she left the uh, commissioner's seating area and wandered into the conference floor among the delegates. She was besieged. Look, it's Edith, the delegate said and shouted, look, it's Edith. So we go on with the montage of All in the Family. And then Jerry Pippen and I talk. And then we close with the closing theme. Many have not heard it. This is a Boston Red for Jerry Pippen. I am the producer. Jerry Pippen is the artist in this production. On the second day of June, 2013. And as the Port Laureate of Newark, New Jersey, one Ellie Bill Graham would say, peace out, and on we go. As sure as you're sitting there. Mm -hmm. Could you give us just one more hand? <laughs> Could you just play cards with yourself? What, you, you, you sure it was Sammy Davis Jr.? No, meathead, it was some Zulu jock. <laughs> I know the man. Besides, you give me a five-buck tip for a buck and a quarter haul anyway. And as fine a gentleman as ever you want to meet. Sat there in the back of the cab talking to me about the weather, all kinds of things, just like a regular person. <laughs> If I could wasn't put a rear view mirror there, I'd thought he was a white guy. Oz, what do you gotta say things like that for? What do you mean, what do I gotta say things like that for? What did I say, anyhow? Would you listen to these two? You can't say nothing around here. They twist around everything you say. Oh, Edith, you know what? I give him our names and address so he can send us an autographed picture of himself. Sammy Davis Jr.? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Did you tell him how much I like him? Oh, sure, Edith. That was the first thing I said. <laughs> oh, I said, Sam, you don't have to worry none about your career, because Edith Bunker is right behind you. I bet he was glad to hear that. Uh, I told you he was coming. There he is, right out there on the stoop. Come on in, Mr. Davis. Oh, Come Mr. on. Davis, oh, it's oh. an honor. Oh, oh. <laughs> Welcome to our house. Thank oh, you. I'm so Thank excited, you. but then you can't. Because you never had to meet yourself. <laughs> Mr. Davis said, it's my wife Edith laughing over there. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Mr. Davis said, yes. my daughter Gloria standing over oh, there. Hello, Gloria. How are you? How are you? And her husband, Mike. Hello, Mike. No! <laughs> Here is, uh, 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 this is only Lionel. He lives next door. Says, uh, my daughter's married to the white guy over here. Oh, well, it certainly is nice to meet all of you nice people, but I think I'd better take the old briefcase and run. Uh, and incidentally, Mr. Bunker, here's a little something for your, for your trouble. Thank oh, jeez, $20. Oh, no, 
Mr. Davis, Archie don't need no reward for doing something for you. Uh, Edith, don't insult the guest in your own home, huh? <laughs> she don't know what she's saying there, Mr. Davis. <laughs> and uh, listen, I just put in a call. The briefcase is coming over. Be here any minute. All right. Well, in, in, in the meantime, will you make yourself at home, huh? We get you some coffee, huh? Well, that's awfully nice of yeah, you. Yeah, sit right down here, Mr. Okay. Davis. Right in my chair. Make yourself comfortable. It's the best in the house. Well, listen, Mr. Davis. I got to tell my mother you're here. She's crazy about you. All right, don't come here. Right, right. <laughs> come on, you two. You don't for here. Make the coffee, huh? And eat it. Excuse me, Mr. Davis. Eat it, eat it, eat it. For yours, too. <laughs> I try. Here we are. Ah, here. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Bunker. Ah, thanks, Edith. Now, that's all right. I can, I can say, Mr. Davis, Edith, get out of here. <laughs> now, Mr. Davis, do you take cream and sugar in your eye? <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> And to friendship. Ah, uh, you hear that? Right, that's nice. To friendship, drink it up myself. Yeah. <laughs> what are you looking at, Barney? You dumb now, get the hell out of here. You're cranky today, Archie. There he is. <laughs> it's really him. Oh, and you're just as cute as you look on television. Oh, my. God bless you. <laughs> now, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I just came in to look at you. Thank you. And I'm looking at you. <laughs> look at you. <laughs> now, I want to say this right, Mr. Davis. Sholem Aleichem. <laughs> but whatever made you turn Jew? Yeah, that's what I've done, all right. And if you were prejudiced, you would, like some people, close their eyes to what's going on in this great country that we live in. But not you, Archie. Your eyes are wide open. You can tell the difference between black and white. Ah. And I have a deep-rooted feeling that you'll always be able to tell the difference between black and white. <laughs> and if you were prejudiced, you'd walk around thinking that you're better than anybody else in the world. But I can honestly say, having spent these marvelous moments with you, you ain't better than anybody. <laughs> Can I have your hand on that sandwich? <laughs> and I hope you all heard that over there. That comes straight from Sammy Davis Jr., Mr. Wonderful himself. And that should prove to you once and for all that I ain't prejudiced. His truth goes by. Interesting thing about it, Norman Lear in that production, by the way, of Boston Red, was that he was a liberal as well. But the writing and production of that and the presentation, much by Gene Stapleton as well as Archie Bunker himself and, and the others, uh, of course, uh, Rob Reiner, who was the liberal son-in-law, uh, the, 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 the whole thing was full of many levels besides the one we most obvious, and that was the bigotry and uh, the prejudice uh, on racial basis showed that uh, Archie was not just, uh, he was an equal opportunity prejudiced person. By that, I mean, he believed women ought to have a place in the home, and that's it, two steps behind the husband. Uh, he disdained anything that was uh, even hinted of liberal education and giving people a good break, like uh, his son-in-law, Rob Reiner, uh, who played that part, uh, tried to... Uh, Say so. So the the show Lear wrote into it several levels, but the magic of that show, and you covered much of that when we were talking about it. But the, the magic of that show is the fact that bigots themselves, true bigots. Uh, I have a uh, uh, a brother-in-law who is an Archie Bunker. I mean, through and through. But guess what? He looked at that show every week. And uh, the reason these bigots looked at it 
and maybe Norman Lear, and maybe it, it uh, actually did some good in clearing the way and getting rid of a little bit of prejudice, is the fact that these uh, these people who were hopelessly prejudiced 